My name is Martin de Mucha Flores. Hello. My job title is Director of Early Academic Outreach Programs. And so I think it's important for folks who come into this work to have an understanding of um, what it means to be a leader, right? And sometimes we think of being a leader as being very, this understanding of being a corporate leader or a leader in business, right? Those are the things we think about. Um, and I like to push back against that. That what it really means to be a leader is to have an understanding of like what your own values are. And really when I think about leadership is actually what does it mean to be a social justice leader, right? And how do you incorporate those values? Because the difference to have like a mindset or focus on social justice, but how do you implement that in everyday work you do is really important to understand. I think my, my biggest challenges I face in my job are that we work in, a, in an organization that is very hierarchical, right? And there's a lot of authority um, that are placed on based on where you're at. And for me, I tend to look at how, as, as in my organization, in EOP, how do I give everyone a piece of authority and power, right? In terms of the things they own and the things they do, and the programs, and even in funding, even though I have ultimate responsibility of those, uh, of those decisions, um, I just end up becoming a sign-off, right? And making sure people ha are involved in the conversation. And it's challenging because you're in an organization where it's, it's created that one person makes the decisions, right? One person sets the agenda. Um, there's a lot um, space for people to have their voice. There's often not a lot of space for consensus, right? Meaning that everyone yeah. actually has a voice in the actual decision, and the decision that's made meets everybody's um, priorities. Yeah. So I, I was born in Woodland, California, which is a tomato town outside of Davis. Um, UC Davis is about 15, 20 minutes northwest of Davis, from California. Um, I was there till about the sixth grade. My mom and dad both worked in the tomato fields while they were putting themselves through college. And then once my mom and them both finished their degrees, they both became you know, in entering professionals. Um, at the time, my dad worked for Davis as an admissions and outreach coordinator. Um, so, but he got a job offering to move down to Fresno to do recruitment for the UC in Fresno. So we moved down to the Central Valley. Um, and that's kind of where things became really challenging for me, right? Because uh, I'm second, third generation Chicano, Mexicano, right? So there's times where you feel, or I felt that, you know, I wasn't Mexican enough to hang out with all the Mexican kids because of predominantly migrant community in Madera, just outside of Fresno, where we lived at. Um, and then the other kids, there were the other students who were like me, who were second, third generation, were really different, right? Like the sense of acknowledging where we come from our community because my mom and dad had always been really big on like hey you know even though we have access to these different resources you have to be mindful of who you are and where we're from right and that you use your privilege to advocate for those who, who can't speak right you give voice for those pieces so it was always this kind of where do I fit in and because of that um, it was easy to be drawn into other directions right so um, because I fit in in a lot of different places, um, I found myself drawn into a bunch of different places, right? Was, was involved with, wasn't necessarily involved with gangs in this respect to like how we think of gangs as being in, in the public or in movies, right? But was more involved in gangs in respect to like that was a community, right, that I fit into, yeah. right? Like they kind of gave me, they validated like, yo, you're hella smart, you know all these different things, like let's hang out. But at the same time, you know, there's also that negative, there, there's also those things that, we do it when you do when you're in groups of people, right? Regardless if it's a yeah. gang or not. When you're in groups of people, it's easy, especially when you're young, right? It's easy yeah. to be involved in things. Um, so that that was like a tension, like where do I fit in? I fit, if I fit in with a lot of different people, and it wasn't just one group of students that I hung out with or youth, like it was a lot of different people. Um, my, my biggest challenge came in my sophomore year when I met with my counselor, and she told me, uh, you know, you, 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 you have C's and B's. Like, you're, you're an okay, you're a good student, right? Like, yeah. most of your teachers like you, and I'm just like, what do you want to do? And I was like, well, um, I kind of want to be a writer, right? And she looked up my grades and my language and stuff. She's like, well, you, you're you not a very good, your grades don't say you're a very good writer. And I'm like, well, what do you mean my grades don't say you're I'm passing my class, right? So how, how what do you mean? Right, explain that yeah. to me. She was like, well, no, no. She, I was like, so what else? And she's like, oh, and I was like, well, maybe, maybe I want to be an engineer. She looked at my math grade. She's like, well, you know, you're, you're not in the right math classes to be an engineer. And I'm like, well, who, who did put me in the right math classes, right, so I could be an engineer? And she's like, well, 
you know, your grades aren't right so that we could put you in the right math classes. And I'm like, well, then, okay, I, 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 then I kind of want to be a teacher, right? And she's like, huh, you don't look like the type. You don't look like a teacher, um, right? And I was like, then what? And I was like, okay, I, you know, what, what should I do? And she's like, well, you know, you should probably take that, you should probably go into ROTC and take the test to go into the military because you're smart enough to do well where you would actually walk into the military probably as a ranking officer or go to, to, to officer school. And I was like, well, if I'm gonna go to the military, then why do I need to stay in school, yeah. right? I can go to work at this point and I can go to the military once I turn 18. So like that day I dropped out of school, right? Because I felt like, you know, if no one believes in me, then if, if school doesn't believe in me, then why should I believe in school, yeah. right? And this, I mean, this was the challenge that, I guess the, 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 the challenge that my mom and dad put me in, right, was that, they had created all this awareness, but they also created a level of, um, I don't know what you want to call ego, right? Yeah. Where I was like, shit, if you're not good enough for me, then why should I be here? Why am I wasting my time, yeah. right? So that was like in December, right, when I, when I, when I left school. Um, at the time, um, I went home, I told mom and dad, I was dropping out. And they said, well, if you're not going to go to school, you got to go to work, right? In the house, to live in the house, you either go to work or you go to school. If you're not doing either, you got to move out, right? I wasn't going to move out, right? So I went, and, so I was like, okay, I'll find a job, you know, this week. And my dad was like, no, 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 I got a job for you. And I was like, sweet. My dad's going to go take me to work with him in the missions and outreach, right? And like, we're going to recruit some students from the valley to go to school. Knocks on my door like four in the morning. I'm like, damn, dude's hella early. We must be going to L.A. or something, right? This is great. So I get all dressed up, put some jeans on, put my dickies on, got all suited up, right? Yeah. And he was like, dress warm. I was like, all right. So dress warm. So we start driving, right? We're in this truck. And, da -da 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 -da, and, start, and, we start, and we're not going towards the freeway anymore. We're going into the middle of an orchard. I'm like, dude, where the fuck are we going? Like, where are we going? And my dad didn't say anything. Get into this middle of the orchard, and we get into the very middle of this orchard, and it gets to this big clearing, and there's all these guys out there with ladders and bags, and it's in the middle of an orange orchard. And in in harvesting time, in the winters, when you typically har harvest oranges, right? Yeah. Because the wa the the cold the cold weather helps to make the, the the oranges sweet, right? After it's been warm. And so he drops me off. He says, "I'll be back in like ten or twelve hours." I said, "Dude, where are you gonna go?" And he's like, no. He's like, you wanted a job. You want to be responsible. You want to be, you know, all these things. This is part of it, right? This is the lesson that we're going to teach you. So, get out there. Do, do pick oranges, right? And I'm like, ah, oh, okay, I do this for the day, right? <laughs> Next day. Again. Again. So I picked oranges all the way through about January. Because we were probably for about a month and a half, two months, picked oranges. And at that time, I was like, ah, whatever, right? I'm going to go find a, a, another job because the, the city season in. And my dad said, no, I already have a job for you. So then he took me to the grape fields. And then during the winter, what you do is you have to tie up all the vines and prune all of them, right? And if you don't like bugs and snakes and all these other things, man, that's the worst place to be because that's where all the bugs, snakes, spiders are, right? So it was in the grapevines picking, treating them up, right? I did that all the way until about April. Do you have gloves? I had gloves, oh, right. Well, let me tell you a story about the gloves. So my first time out picking oranges, it was one of the days that it would freeze at night, right? It would get below 30 oh. degrees in the Central Valley. And so what they would do is they'd spray the oranges with water, and they'd, they'd use these huge propeller fans to move the air around. And that way it would keep the oranges from freezing. So the oranges freeze at night, the water in the cells of the orange will burst, and it ruins the orange. Yeah. So by placing the, by spraying them with water and pushing the air on, it keeps them from freezing. The thing is, at 4 in the morning, it's actually the coldest point in the day, right? That's the coldest time in the day, right? And we're out there picking the oranges with just gloves on, and the water's getting on our hands. And the water would freeze, right? So our hands would get super numb. And so when I'm out there with this little knife, I had caught my hand a bunch of times. But I didn't notice because my hands were numb. And so it wasn't until I took open, I had lunch, and I was like, dude, why are my hands all wet, right? I opened my gloves, and I could see I'd been cutting, I'd been nicking my fingers that whole time. I, like, I was hit nicking this part of my hand, right? Oh. So my hands were all bloody. 
the foreman came by, put some things on it, and I was like, all right, can I go home? He was like, you see that row? You need to finish that row before you can go home. Right, and this road went for it went for I felt like it went for like a mile or something like that, right? Um, but after that, it gave me this appreciation for understanding hey, who's gonna make my choices for me, right? Am I gonna let someone who 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 told me something else about the things I want to do make those choices for me, or am I gonna make them on my own, right? And, but one of the things I say though, and I and the reason I had to say this though when I'm sharing this story though is that I was fuck I was lucky, right? My whole life has been lucky. I wouldn't suggest my path for people to follow because I I was lucky. You know, I was in a horrible car accident when I was 19 that left me paralyzed, right? And I still hadn't gotten my the whole school thing right. Like even when I went back to school after working in the field, like a lot of it was just I was just there filling the chair. Right? because no one was engaging with me. And it wasn't until I got into a community in college that I got into a program called the Buente Project that I finally engaged with someone who I felt like saw my potential. Right? And they were able to dig it out of me. But at the same time, like there were a lot of distractions. Right, I'm 20 years old. Right? What do you want to do when you're 20? Right? You want to be out. Right? And that's what I did. You know? But it cost me a lot. But I've learned from it, though, too. Right? And that's, I mean, a lot of... I wouldn't change the things that have happened to my, me in my life, even though there have been some really serious moments where I've almost lost my life, right? Because it's put me where I'm at right now. Oh, so those things really inspire you to be like to, to like be the person you are today. They do, right? They yeah. do. They make they make me the person of who I am, along with like you know having mentors, having informal mentors, right? There are people who I really didn't like. Who now I look back on my life, I'm like, man, that guy was a mentor to me. I had this band teacher, super conservative, listened to Rush Limbaugh all the time. Uh, Him and I would have it out in the classroom, right? But he, we wouldn't have it out with each other in, we were calling each other names. But he was actually challenging me to think about the comments and statements I were making, right? Because he was like, yo, if you're going to make a comment about politics or policy, you need to be able to back it up. And I remember him, I remember I used to always wonder, like, I hate this guy. Like, why does he always call me out? Right? But now as an adult, I look back and I'm like, man, he just, he was just challenging me, right? Because yeah, he may not saw the same potential, but he was just challenging me in a way that, like, if you're going to grow, then let's grow. Yeah. Oh. yeah, thank you. You all right?